Okay, this is video number five for chapter six. So it covers section 6.6, .6, which has um, a whole bunch of different kinds of problems that involve percents and money. So you can check out these pages in the book for more examples. Um, and if we read this target, it says solve problems with percents and money involving tip, tax, discount, markups, all of that. So there's actually lots of different kinds of problems we're going to see in this section. This video is just an introduction to it. We will do more notes and practice together in class. Um, so it's okay if you still have questions or are a little confused after watching this video. We're going to do more together. So the first thing I want to do is go over some um, vocab. You probably already know what some of these are, and I know there's not a lot of room on the paper. So we're just going to talk about them real quickly just to make sure we all are on the same page. A discount is when they take something off from the price. So it's on sale or it's on clearance or you have a coupon. It's going to make your price lower some sort of discount. Tip and tax add on to a price or a total, right? A tip is something you give for service. So if you tip somebody who cuts your hair or you tip somebody who carries your bags or you tip somebody who brings you your food. And then a tax is money um, that gets added on to your bill or to your total that goes to the government. So both of those make your price go up. And then a markup as well, a markup is also it will increase your price when you go to buy something. A markup is what the store added on to the price so that they make money. If there was never any markup, all the businesses would go out of business because they would never be able to make any money. So a markup is what a store adds on to a price. So that they can make some money. So just to go over a few of the terms a little bit more that we're going to see a lot in this section. An original price is going to be before either a discount or before a tip or before tax or before a markup. So this original price when we're doing our proportion or equation is going to be the whole. And then the sale price or the selling price, that is going to be after a discount or tip or tax or markup. And this one's going to be the part. So that just helps a little bit. If you know you're looking for the original price or the sale price, it helps you kind of put things in the right spot. Okay. And markup price, this is... Um, like a selling price after they mark it up, what are they going to sell it to the customers for? Okay. So for all of these, we can still use the, and this is blanks to fill in on your notes, we can still use the percent proportion, we can still use the percent equation, and add this, we're still going to see some problems that we already know how to do where it says find the new amount. We already know how to do that from section 6.5. So a lot of this is just putting together stuff we've already done all in terms of money problems. So here's our first example. We're going to do four examples together and there's a spot on your notes for each one. So find the spot that says the example with the shorts, finding a new amount. It says um, the original price of the shorts was $35. What is the sale price if I can see right here that they're 25% off? Okay, well, I know what it started as. I know how much it's going to change and I'm looking for the sale price now. This is just a new amount problem that we've already done. So we know how to do this. It has two steps. Step one was to find out how much I get to take off or how much I get to save. So let's find how much 25% of $35 is. Again, you can use the proportion or equation. I'll just use the equation. 25%, well, I should write the whole equation out first. A equals P times W. 25% written as a decimal times 35 bucks. And it looks like I get this number. So we're talking about money. Put a dollar sign on there. So the 25% that it's on sale is an $8.75 savings. That's what I get to take off. When I take 25% away, it means I get to take off $8.75. So to find the new price, well, it was $35 minus $8.75. And it looks like it comes out to $26.25. So this would be the new sale price, finding the new amount after I put it on sale. OK, 
Okay, how about find a discount? How much do you save? You want a new DVD that costs $19, but today it's 30% off. I want to know how much do I save because I bought it today while it was on sale. Okay? So if I think about this question, I'm really just trying to find how much is that 30% of the 19 bucks that I don't have to pay anymore because they are taking it off the total. So um, let's do the proportion this time. If I want 30%, Right, my proportion A over W equals P over 100. 30% of, and the original price, remember, is always the W or the whole. So I want to find 30% of 19 and figure out how much I get to save. So let's cross multiply, show the work. 19 times 30. And then 100 times A. Divide by the 100 to get A by itself. And it looks like the part that I get to save is $5.70. So that 30% that it was on sale, 30% off, I didn't pay for 30% of it, and that ended up being $5.70. Okay, find a new total after tax or tip or markup. Okay, we've kind of done this before already too, right? A new amount. Store pays $70 for a bicycle. The percent of the markup is 20%. What are they going to sell it to the customers for? So they have to charge more than $70 because they have to make some money. So um, let's do the proportion again here. If I know that A over W equals P over 100, what the store pays is the original price. And the original price is going to be our W. So if I set that up, the store down here pays $70 for the bicycle. They are going to mark it up 20%. So let's find out, find out how much they're going to mark it up. 20% of that. And we're going to find the part. So cross multiply. And I get that the markup is going to be $14. So let's read the question again. What is the selling price? What are they going to charge customers for that bike? Well, they're going to add on $14 to what it costs them. So if it costs them $70, add on the markup, I'm going to see a price tag of $84 when I go to buy that bike from Target or Walmart or wherever. Okay? All right. One more example finding an original price. So here's a question that says, um, the shoes now cost $33, but they're 40% off. What would they be whole price um, or original price if they weren't on sale? So let's say the sale ends tomorrow. If you go back um, the day after tomorrow and try to buy them, what would the total original full price be? So let's set up our um, proportion again. Okay, what do we know? Well, I know I'm taking 40% off. So here's where these can get a little tricky. If I'm going to put, like we said in the beginning, the sale price is going to be the part, the original price is going to be the whole, then this is going to be, so sale price is the part, this is going to be the percent that the customer pays. So I have to think this through a little bit. If the shoes are 40% off, well, that means like if I picture the entire price of the shoes 100%, but they're going to take 40% of it away that I don't have to pay anymore, how big is this piece that I am still paying for? Well, I'm still paying for 60% of the shoe price. So now when I set it up, I'm going to end up doing the sale price, which is 33 bucks, and that ends up being 60% of the original price. What was that original price? So we'll cross multiply that. 60W equals 
Divide both sides by 60 to get w by itself. And I get that. So, looks like the shoes would originally cost $55. Now, the cool thing about all these money problems is I can usually take my answer and plug it back in and, ch and check it again. So if I take this $55 and I say, hey, I'm paying $33 out of $55. Let's see what that comes out to just as a check. And I get, yep, 60%, which is what we said we should be paying right there. So that means they did take 40% off. All right, so a couple other quick things to go over. You can do all of the problems like we've seen with two steps, right? Finding the new amount. I just want to point out that there is a shortcut and a lot of you will like this and use it um, and, and like it better than doing it out the long way. But we'll go over more examples of this tomorrow or together in class too. But here's the shortcut. If I know I'm buying something, like I have a food bill or I have a haircut bill or I have some bill already, and I'm going to add on 17% tip, then I could say as a shortcut, I'm really paying for 117% of the total bill, right? 100% of whatever it was, plus an extra 17%. Or when you go to check out and you're adding on 8% tax to your bill, well, you're paying 100% for your total bill, plus an extra 8%, you're really paying 108% in total. Or if a store adds on 155% markup, well, I have to pay what the store paid. I had to pay their 100% plus an extra 55, 155%. And now as a customer, I'm paying 255% of what the store paid. Okay, what about if something's 33% on sale or a discount of 33%? Well, I would have had to pay 100%, but I get to take 33% away and I'm left paying 67%. So I could just use this number as my shortcut. Or if something's marked up 95%, well, the store paid 100, they're gonna add on an extra 95, and they're gonna charge you 195%. What about if something is 65% off? Well, instead of paying the 100%, the full price, I get to take 65% away, and I'm left paying 35%. So you can do it as a shortcut and kind of think of what's the overall percent that I am paying for and use that number. So try these. Pause it and then write down what the overall percent would be for those four. Okay, so here if we check it, if I add in 20% tax, now I'm paying for 120% of my total bill my original bill. 45% off means I'm still paying for 55% of the original price. Adding an 18% tip would give me this, and adding a 47% markup would give me that. So you have a chance to do these three practice problems. Um, think about the way we set up the examples. You can use the shortcut or not. We're go gonna go over more of each type um, together in class, but try these as practice. So pause and then we'll come back and check. Okay, in the first one, if the markup is 20%, I found how much that 20% would be. So I found the part that ended up being $15. So the store is going to add $15 onto what they pay and put $90 on the price tag when you go to buy it. Next one. It's 40% off and it's on sale for $10. Well, if this is the sale price, then I have to match it up with the percent that I paid. So if it's 40% off, I'm still paying for 60% of it. So the $10 is 60% of what original price. And if I just do the cross multiplying there, I come up with $16.66. So that was the original price. And then they put it on sale and I only had to pay 10. And the last one. Um, the original price is 50. Remember, the original price is going to be your W, so I put it down here for the whole. Sale price was 20% off. Well, let's figure out what that 20%, how much that would be. So I found 20% of $50, and that came out right here to 10. I found the part, 10 bucks off. So because it's on sale, I get to take that $10 off the price. So it was 50, take $10 off, and now the skateboard will be 40. So 
we'll do more together, but that's the video. Thanks.